Pawan Sharma asks, find the sum of the last five consecutive numbers in the Excel. Then Pawan supplies us with a data set. And in column A, we have a product ID and which each product we have 10 values associated with it. Now, some of these values equal zero. So what's Pawan trying to do is to sum the last five values that do not equal zero. And then he tried an approach of using a filter function inside of its Hague function, but it didn't quite work out. So let's take a look as to how we can do this. I've recreated the data set. Now, the first thing I would like to do is to get a new array that shows me each cell that either contains a number bigger than zero or that doesn't contain a number bigger than zero. And so we can do this using an if function. When normally we are using the F function, usually we only use this to reference one cell. However, it's also possible to reference an entire array and then do a logical test on an entire array. And so that's exactly what we are going to do. We are going to do a logical test on each individual row. So we select this row here from B2 to K2 and we check if this is equal to zero. If it's equal to zero, then we want to keep zero. If it does not equal zero, then we want to place a one. I close the parentheses and I press enter. And so there we have the results of the first row. Now I'll pull this through a bit for four records so we can see what this gives, right? So every time we have a value in our original data set, this will represent a one in our new data set. And if we have a zero, that remains a zero. So this is an easy way for us to indicate which cells actually contain the values that we're interested in and which we are not interested in. The next thing we're looking to do is to see how many of these ones appear next to each other, indicating they are consecutive. Now, this is quite a bit tougher than you might think, because for this, we will have to use the scan and lambda function together. These were new functions introduced into Excel that are very powerful, but that can also be a little bit harder to get your head around. So hopefully I can do a good job at introducing these to you. So how we are starting is by writing a scan function. And so what a scan function will do is we provide an initial value to the scan function and then also an array. And then we can do something with each value from this array, comparing it to the initial value. And then the result of the scan function will be a new array with the intermediary results. So as an initial value, we are going to be taking zero. As the array, we are going to be taking this whole row here. And then we need to provide a function. And now this function we always supply through the usage of a, another function called lambda. So lambda, and this will create a nameless function. This is a concept that is very well known in programming, but it's quite new to Excel. Now, how you have to look at this is that within this lambda function, we can reference variables called parameters and then perform calculations with them. When you use the lambda function in combination with a scan function, the first argument of the lambda function will be a parameter representing the initial value. In my case, I will call this A. So in our case here, A represents zero. Then the second parameter, when we use lambda in combination with scan, like we're doing right here, will represent a value in our array. So we have selected as our array here, this entire row. And what the lambda will do is it will loop over each value in our array. And so for each loop, the value in the array will be represented with a parameter that is as a second argument in our lambda function, which we will call B. Then we need to provide a third argument for the lambda function. And that, that is where we are going to put the calculation. So in our case, we want to check if, so we're using a function here inside of the lambda. We want to check if the value that is in the array equals zero, right? If that's the case, then we're not interested. So how we are going to be writing this is if B equals zero, right? And remember B is each individual value from our array here. So from this row. So we're starting at number one here in cell B12. So we're checking this. Does this equal zero? No, it does not equal zero. Okay, then we're interested and we're going to do something. However, if this would have been a zero, then we would have not been interested. And then we just want to return a zero. So if B is zero, then we return zero. However, if B is not zero, what we're then looking to do is to add A and B together. Now, remember, A is whatever we set our initial value as in the scan function. So this was zero to start and B is a current value in our array. 
So for the first time we're going through this, we'll have one. And so we check this, this cell equals zero, no. Well, then we add A plus B together, B representing this cell being one and A representing zero. Now, whatever is being returned here will be the new A value, right? So this initial value is only initially zero, then it will change, right? So the A starts at zero, but if we do a calculation, so that's here A plus B, then, well, A is zero, B is one. So then the new A for the next calculation in the next cell, A will represent one. And so then we will once again add a one to and we'll get a two, etc. So let's close our parentheses, press enter and see what this gives. So what we are getting back here is each time the ones are consecutive, we add one, right? One, two, three, four, five. So now let me pull this through for the other ones. So what you can see here, the second row is a little bit more interesting. So what does the uh, scan and lambda function do? Well, we have zero as initial value and we check the first value in our array. Okay, if this value, so there's a value over here, equals zero, then we simply put zero, otherwise we do a calculation. In this case, it's not zero, so do a calculation. The calculation that we're doing is adding A and B together, right? Now, A represented zero and B was a current value in a row of the array, so that's one. So we have zero plus one, that equals one, okay. So then we go to the next column. And so here we're checking this zero. Now, the first thing we're checking within our Lambda function is does B equals zero. Well, in this case, it does equal zero. So then we simply put a zero and we also return zero as our A, right? So we're starting from the beginning again. And so this is crucial when we're looking at consecutive numbers because each time we have a zero, we basically want to start counting again, right? Because the consecutiveness was broken. And so that's really what we're doing, right? So if you look here where we have this tree here, well, we are looking at the value above here. Does this equal zero? No. Well, what do we then do? Then we add this one to the value that came before it that was stored in the A. So that's the two before it. So then we have a tree. So this is the way how we can check if values are consecutive. So next up, we want to indicate where we can find those values that are five or larger. So for this, we will once again use an if function and we select the entire row. So only when this value is bigger than or equal to five, we want to put a one, otherwise we put a zero. I close the parentheses, I press enter and I can pull this through. So now every instance where we have a one is a potential candidate to be used for consecutive numbers because we know with each one, the four preceding values will contain consecutive numbers. What we're now looking to do is to find the one that is most situated to the right. That way we have the most recent consecutive series. For this, we can use an X match function. So what an X match function does is we provided a lookup value, just like how we would do this with a X lookup. Now in this case, the lookup value is one because we will be searching for the ones in our array. So where will we be searching? Well, it's in the, this row here. And then the match mode, we can leave that blank. That's zero for exact match, but that's also the default behavior. But what's important is here that we define the search mode because you want to search from last to first, meaning you want to start from the right and then pick the first one that we are encountering. So the fourth argument here is minus one, indicating search last to first. We close the parentheses and press enter. And so what the xmatch function returns is a position in the array where we found the match. So in this case, the one was found at the fifth position. So let's pull this through. And so we can see here, the one was found at the eighth position. And here we found the one at the seventh position, right? Because we're searching from the right to the left because we want to find the most recent consecutive series. Okay, so now we want to use this position to take a subset of our original data. So for this, we will use the take function. And so with a take function, we supply an array. So in this case, that's one row. And from this array, we want to take a number of rows. Well, because we're only selecting one row, we only want to take one row as well, but we only want to take a certain number of columns. And so the number of columns we are looking to take is the same number of columns that was provided by the X match function. So I close the parentheses and I press enter. And so here you can see the results. Now, what this gives us, if we are looking from the right, it gives us the consecutive series that we're looking for. However, there's still some redundant 
numbers at the front that you want to get rid of. And so we can get rid of those by putting this into a second take function. So we wrap this take function in another take function. We are once again taking one row and this time we're taking five columns from the right side. And so we can indicate this by putting here minus five in the columns argument. If we put a minus with this argument, it will take it from the right side instead of the standard left side. I close the parentheses and I press enter. In the first row, nothing changes, but if I now pull this through, you can see that each time we get the five latest values in that range. And so let's see if it matches. So for the second row, we are indeed taking from 55 to 85, so that's correct. For the third row, we're here taking from 35 to 64. So it's also the consecutive uh, numbers that we're looking for. And so now all that's left to do is to sum all of these values, just like that. And so we're taking the sum of the last five consecutive numbers. Now let's put all of this together in one formula. Uh, it will make it quite a little bit more uh, difficult to see, but then we don't need all of this extra space to do our calculations. So it's a little bit neater, uh, but I definitely wanted to show it this way first so you can see the underlying logic uh, because now it will get a little bit more complex and convoluted perhaps. So we will put the sum here in column L. And so we will write the function once here in row two and then simply uh, fill this downwards. Okay, so just like before, we are starting like with the if function. So we are taking this row. And so if this row equals zero, then we put a zero, otherwise we put a one, All right? That's how we're starting here. Then next we want to use our Lambda function. So for this, we use this can function. The first argument to this can function is the initial value. And that's the one that we are going to be accumulating over. In this case, it's a zero. And so the second argument is the array that we are going to be looping over. And that's the array that we have just calculated with the zeros and ones from the if function. And then the last and third argument is a function, namely a lambda function. And in the lambda function, we provide parameters and calculations. When we use the lambda function in combination with this scan function, the first argument will represent the initial value and then also the value that we will be accumulating over. So that will be the A. And then the second parameter parameter to the lambda function, that will represent the current uh, number in our array. So this we will put in value B. And then the third argument in our lambda function in this case will be the calculation that we will be performing. Now, before we do the calculation, we want to check, so we can also use functions inside of this. If the current value in our array equals zero, so the current value in our array is indicated by B, so if this equals zero, then we simply want to put a zero and return a zero. So we start all over again in counting. However, if B was not a zero, then we want to do a calculation and the calculation is adding uh, A and B together. Now, in this case, B will always be one. So we will simply be adding one value to A. Now I close the parentheses three times and I press enter. And so what we're getting is an array back that will add numbers together and so whenever a break in the numbers happens, so it's no longer consecutive, we have a zero in between, then you will see that we get a zero in between and we start counting from one again. So this is achieved by having this if function within the lambda function, where we are first checking if the current value equals a zero. And if it is, then we reset A, the accumulator or the initial value back to zero and we're starting from the beginning again. Now, Normally, it would be possible here to already do the X match, right, where we're simply looking for the highest value here in this range and then return that. But that is not a very uh, generalistic approach because then we might run into an issue um, where, for example, let's say we're looking for the uh, latest three consecutive variables. Well, then we could have like four consecutive variables and then three at the end. So it would be one, two, three at the end. And if we're then looking for the highest value in this range, it would actually take the four from here and not the latest three over here. So that's why we're taking an intermediary step of first converting all of those values that could be a potential match to ones. And then we will be taking the one from the right. So that way we avoid this issue of running, of picking an earlier uh, series of consecutive numbers. So we wrap this can function in an if function and we're saying, okay, if whatever is being returned by this can function is bigger than or equal to five, then we will be returning a one, otherwise a zero. And I close the parentheses. Now we are simply getting back a list of zeros and ones with one indicating there's a potential consecutive series there that we can take because four values to the right, well, those are all consecutive values. 
Okay, so whatever is being returned here, we'll need that a couple of times. So then it's always a good idea to use a let function to put this entire formula inside a variable. And then you can simply reference this variable without having to rewrite this function in its entirety. So I use a let function, let. And then the first argument to the let function is the name of the function. In this case, I will call this seek from sequence. I go to a, put a comma. So then the second argument is whatever this variable represents, the formula this variable will be representing. So that's the entire formula returned by this if statement with a scan inside of it. And then we go to the third argument. And now I press Alt Enter to go to a new line in my formula bar. This doesn't do anything practical. It just structures my code a little bit better. And so here we then write whatever we want to execute and we can reference the variables that we defined earlier. So if I simply write seek here, all that will be happening is we're saying, okay, run whatever seek equals to, and here we said, okay, seek equals this entire F function. So this is exactly the same thing. If I press enter, you can see nothing has changed. But now we can use this seek instead of having to rewrite this entire function each time we want to reference it. So now what we're looking to do is to use the X match function to find those ones that are most to the right. So I write X match. Now what we're looking for, that's a lookup value. In our case, we're looking for the ones and we're trying to find these ones in the lookup array that was defined in the sec argument. Very important is that we define the search mode. So the match mode, we can put us in at exact match as also the default behavior. But with the search mode, we are specifically looking to search from last to first so that we start, start searching from the right and going to the left. Otherwise, it is possible that we might be taking an earlier consecutive series. So we pick search last to first with minus one. I close the parentheses and if I now press enter, what we are getting is the position of that one earlier in our row. It's namely the one most to the right. So next up, we will be wrapping this in those take functions, right? So we wrap all of this in a take function where we are taking from this initial array. And what we're taking, well, we're taking one row, the same row, but we're taking a number of columns. And the number of columns is indicated at the position where we found um, this one most to the right. So I close the parentheses. And so we're getting back all those numbers to the left, starting at the one most to the right. Now, in this case, that works as intended. But if we pull down, you can see here, it's actually more than five uh, that we're getting back. So we need to trim it. So we only take five from the right. So we wrap this in another take function. We're taking from the array returned by the take function. We are once again taking one row and the number of columns that we're taking, well, we're taking five columns from the right. So we indicate this with a minus five. So press minus five and close the parentheses and press enter. So now nothing has changed with the first row, but if we drag down, it actually has changed over here. And so now we're wrapping this in a sum function to take the sum of this. Just like that, I press enter and we can pull this down. As you can see, we get the results. Now there's a small improvement we could make, and that is we could uh, add some error handling so that when there's no four consecutive numbers, we are actually going to put an error, right? And so how we're doing this is we will be using an if statement here within our calculation. And we're saying, okay, if the maximum that's being returned by the calculation in sequence equals zero, meaning there's not a single suitable candidate, then we will be writing uh, no series found. Otherwise, we're doing the current cal calculation and we're adding another parentheses and press enter. Now I can pull this through. You'll see nothing has changed, but let's say we change this one here to a zero and press enter. You can see that it returns no series found as opposed to an error.